Hello and welcome to another training video from the Aldus Academy. Today I'd like to tell you a little bit more about the Visualint cameras and want to give you a brief overview of how to configure um, the cameras and get them set up. Hopefully you've already watched the Visualint overview training video. If you haven't, I'd urge you to do that first and then come back to this video. Um, that will help you understand how Visualint cameras um, have got advanced object detection built into them where they're able to identify uh, if a person is in the field of view and then actually trigger notifications that could be an email, could be um, a message to the control system, the monitoring station, security company or to a control system which can then trigger automation tasks turning lights on, that kind of stuff, as a result of seeing a person in the field of view. Here I'm using the VI-1200 camera, which is a fixed uh, lens, 2.8mm wide-angle lens. As you can see, it's uh, giving you a good field of view for the entire room, um, and it's a nice, crisp 1080p uh, high-definition image um, of our demo room, in fact. If I click on the Setup tab, uh, or button up in the top right-hand corner here, normally that would ask me for a username and password, but I've already logged into it, so um, it's taken me straight in on this occasion. First thing I would tend to do is take a look at the time, uh, make sure the time zone is set correctly, and make sure it's set to NTP, uh, which is Network Time Protocol, so that the clock stays synchronized and accurate um, and where you want it to be. Next, I'll go to streams. Um, so here you can see I've got three tabs, uh, stream, well, first stream, second stream, and snapshot. Um, I've got the first stream set up at 1080p video, and I'm using H.264 uh, video encoding and eight frames per second. Uh, so that's kind of a good place to be for a good high quality image. The second stream I'm not really using, uh, it's disabled, but um, I might use this maybe if I've got a control system where the touchscreen can't handle such high resolution images and then you can have a lower resolution image being sent on a second stream to those touch screens to keep them happy uh, if need be. And on the snapshot tab, this is where I might set up a rule that when someone enters the field of view, it takes a picture during a certain time schedule maybe and then emails it to me. I don't really want a super high res image that will be multiple megabytes being emailed to me. So I might wanna set that to a slightly lower resolution um, for the snapshots um, that the camera might take. This particular camera is a fixed uh, focal length. Um, some of the other cameras, the 1500, the 4300, have got, are actually very focal lenses. Um, a lot of cameras have little screws underneath them that you're up a ladder and you have to try and adjust the focal length and the focus, you know, when you're uh, 20 foot up in the air and having to hold a monitor to try and get it focused in and it's a nightmare. Visualink cameras have motorized lenses um, so you can just fit the camera and then you can adjust the focus and the focal length from the HTML GUI. Uh, so this camera is a fixed um, uh, focal length. Uh, you can adjust the focus uh, with this focus assistant here or the other cameras actually you can adjust the telephoto length uh, of the focal length and um, and has like one click autofocus which is really nice. If I move down into video I would tend to jump into the camera uh, setting and there's a lot of stuff in here but I'm not going to go through all of it just give you some of the highlights. Um, the um, exposure here is quite useful to use the flickerless mode if it, if there are fluorescent lights which is what we've got in our demo room uh, fluorescent lights can cause um, some sort of uh, flicker on the screen because of the noise the electromagnetic interference um, and uh, this will this mode here will simply just get rid of it altogether just eliminate that flicker on the screen uh, if you don't have that then leave it on auto and that'll be fine We've also got um, auto gain control. I tend to put that up to 100. Um, it's like a little bit of amplification on the video image. Um, it goes up to 100, so you know, use it. Um, that's what I tend to do. Um, you have got some ability to mess around with the exposure and increase the exposure, which is opening up the lens, letting more light in. Uh, if it's a non-IR camera that hasn't got built-in infrared, if it has got built-in infrared, then you don't need this because the infrared will illuminate in pitch black darkness. This camera doesn't have IR um, uh, infrared built into it, 
Um, it will see in very low light levels, but if you, you know, you could increase the exposure here to let more light in to get down to really, really low light levels. But if it's pitch black darkness, you really need to use the 1300, which has got the built-in infrared. The digital wide dynamic range, uh, this will allow you to cope and compensate for um, views where there might be strong light in one area coming through a window or a doorway or something and resulting in very dark areas elsewhere. By playing with this, you can kind of harmonize that a little bit and um, get rid of, uh, get rid of um, sort of dark spots on the image. Uh, day night, this is when the camera will switch into day night mode. Um, leave that on auto um, and you can play with these numbers here which will basically uh, tell the camera when to flick into night vision mode which is obviously black and white. Day vision mode is full colour. 11 and 12 are good numbers to use but if you feel the camera's not flicking into night vision mode soon enough maybe you could jack that up to 20 and 21 and then it will go into night vision mode quicker. Um, and the other nice thing, of course, is uh, if you do play with any of these uh, attributes by hitting apply and down here, you get an instant uh, preview of what you've done to the image. So you haven't got to go flicking around uh, different screens to try and see what I've done, which is um, very useful and quite uh, good time saving. I'm going to uh, jump now down to the fun stuff, which is under VCA. That's where all the analytics is set up. Um, normally this is disabled out of the box. So the first thing you have to do is click on enable, disable, and then click on the little tick box at the top here to enable it for object tracking and hit apply because you won't have these menu items to start with and then they will appear once you've enabled the analytics. Then you'll jump into zones and rules. One word of warning is this screen does use ActiveX, so you really have to use um, Internet Explorer in order to be able to set this up. And then when you load it for the first time, it will ask you about so, to load the applet. So you've got to accept that into the browser uh, and then you're good to go. So in here, um, what I want to do is set up a zone that will then, if, if a person is detected in that zone, we're then going to send an event to something and trigger an event. So to create a zone, I can just right click. I can also create lines that if someone walks across a line, then that might trigger the event, and so we call them sort of virtual trip wires. Um, or in this case, I'm going to um, I'm going to actually want to create a zone. Uh, so that gives me this red blob here. Then I can grab these little corners and I can pull them out to wherever I want to to create myself um, a zone of any shape that I want to. I can add more nodes by double clicking anywhere on the line to uh, create any sort of uh, shape and obviously if I highlight I can delete um, any of those icons as, uh, any of those nodes as well um, gonna make sure I get the doorway um, but I don't want to pick up the TV because as you can see the camera is already identifying objects from the TV screen which obviously would be false triggers so we don't want to be uh, picking up anything from that area there Okay, happy with that. So that's my zone, covers the whole area. Uh, when it's selected and highlighted, I can click over here and I could name that zone. Because let's say I had, if I had multiple zones, then obviously naming them might be, uh, might be useful to be able to distinguish. And I can have different triggers from different zones. And I can have up to 40 zones on a single camera. So I've got plenty um, to be able to deal with here. Over on the right hand side, you can see I've got presence. Um, so this is the basic presence detection filter. This will detect when there's an object in the room. Um, a person or a vehicle uh, is detected. Uh, you can't create different classifications. It's just gonna detect something. And that's what you get with the camera. If you wanna start doing more sophisticated things like triggering different rules on a person versus a car versus a dog you know we could distinguish an adult or a child then you can absolutely do that but you need to buy an additional software license which is the vid the detect license you buy it once um, per camera and it's one off fee for life and then you get all that kind of extra capability which i would always recommend whenever you're quoting uh, visual ink cameras always quote a detect license with each camera so you get all that extra functionality because you never know 
what it is your customer is going to want you to do with these cameras so it's best to have all of the facilities at your fingertips but you can see here a little taster all these things are grayed out they're not available to me because i haven't got a detect license but i could filter uh, on when someone enters the room someone exits the, the zone rather uh, if someone appears like this doorway is a good example because you're not actually entering the zone just appearing because the entire doorway is consumed by the zone if someone disappears as in leaves the, the zone stops so if someone's moving and then stops um, you can have a stop filter dwell is really useful a dwell filter gets used an awful lot if you imagine you've got a zone set up and someone just walks past and just clips a corner you really don't want to trigger on that because that was really a false detection um, so the dwell filter can eliminate those because you can set up a dwell filter that says I need to see somebody or the object inside the zone for more than three seconds let's say uh, and then you send the event so you can get rid of a lot of false triggers by using the dwell rule which is very powerful direction filters let me trigger events based on directionality of flow of the object tailgating is more really used for car park scenarios where it can pick up when a car is tailgating behind another car trying to get out from the barrier without paying and we can even do color filters we can trigger events based on the color of someone's shirt or what clothing they're wearing so quite a lot of capability there uh, we've only got the presence filter uh, and that's ticked and i've set up my zone and of course what i mustn't forget to do is hit apply to apply that to the camera so now we've created our zone uh, and our filter uh, and if someone were to walk in there um, we would then see down the bottom here um, events being generated every time a person uh, is detected within that zone that's all well and good but what do i want to do when i detect a person in that zone well that's where i go to the event configuration and event rules and again i'd have to enable this um, to start with uh, but I've already done that on this camera and I can add a rule and I will enable that rule and maybe I'll call it uh, person in demo room. Now the, the actual thing that will trigger this rule is my VCA zone. I can select all zones or just select my main zone because I've only got the one zone anyway. Um, but that's what's going to trigger this rule. I mean, I can trigger the rule and other things as well, as you can see from the other tick boxes on the screen. But I'm going to trigger this rule based on somebody entering that zone. What's the action? Now I click on the action tab, and this is where I can say what action takes place when that rule is triggered from that filter. Um, one thing that's always sensible to do is save the event log. There's an onboard event log on the camera, and that's worth uh, always recording to. Uh, recording the event to. Um, I have got an onboard SD card for edge recording on the camera so if I have utilized that I could start recording um, on the SD card uh, with this option here. I could send an email uh, by ticking this I can set up email rules and I can attach a snapshot and email that to somebody. I can FTP content <clears throat> or I can use IP notifications via HTTP or TCP. One of the very useful things is to actually send a message to the NVR um, to let the NVR know there's been an event. Um, and then when you're playing back content from the NVR, you can just filter out and only show the content where there was an event. So if something has happened, you haven't got to wade through hours of video, you can just say, right, show me the video where there was an event from a person entering the zone which obviously is uh, very powerful and saves hours when it comes to looking for the bit of content that you're, uh, you're trying to find. Also, these IP notifications are used for sending messages to the control systems. So we have drivers for Control 4, Savant, Crestron, Bitwise controls, um, and then it becomes very powerful. Now you can trigger macros in the control system based on what the camera's seen. This could, for example, um, it'll turn some lights on. Very powerful security deterrent is if you detect someone in the back garden at night, turn the lounge or kitchen lights on that are visible from the back garden so any opportunistic intruder is going to see lights come on inside the house, is going to assume it's been spotted and jump over the fence and go and attack somebody else's house. 
Um, uh, equally, um, you could have another rule that says if I detect someone in the back garden, um, send a message to the control system and the control system could check to see if the alarm is armed. And if the alarm is armed, then, then notify the customer, phone them up. Um, equally, uh, you can actually uh, enable and disable these rules via HTTP commands from the control system. So you could actually have a rule that says notify the customer if I see someone in the back garden, but only enable the rule when the alarm is armed. And when the alarm is disarmed, then the control system could disable the rule. And that way you've got direct communication from camera to customer if you don't want to go via the control system for security and sort of reliability purposes reasons. So very powerful. Um, I'm just going to leave this one set up um, just to save to the event log uh, for the purposes of this uh, training exercise. One thing that um, is also very useful is to be able to see uh, the rectangle that the camera draws around the object on the screen. Um, I get a few questions, uh, how do I do that? That's back under VCA and burnt in annotations. You need to enable that and display objects and you can you know, display that um, alarmed objects are objects inside a zone, they're shown as red, and non-alarm objects are objects that are outside the zone which are displayed in yellow. So if I go back to my zones and rules screen, um, you'll see here that um, we've got the zone. And what I'm going to attempt to do now is uh, go mobile and walk into the demo room. And hopefully what we'll see is myself appear. And you can instantly see, yep, here I am, hello. Uh, you can instantly see it's drawn a rectangle around me and down the bottom of the screen you can see um, it's detected um, an event and uh, it says main presence. So presence events in, in that main zone area. Um, so that will then have obviously saved it to the event log and could equally have you know, sent a message to my control system or emailed me. So as you can see, Vigilant Camera is incredibly powerful. It, it really turns traditional uh, reactive CCTV into a proactive uh, capability to notify you at the time, which could actually prevent the event from happening, prevent the burglary from happening, uh, but also for turning lights on and making your automation systems more intelligent uh, it really, these cameras really give you a control system eyes that allow you to uh, make a home uh, or a building uh, commercially or residentially more intelligent. For any other questions, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, our website is www.aldersystems.co.uk. Our contact details are there. And I hope to speak to you again on another training module soon. Thank you very much.